Hey everybody, Travis and Nikki here from OldsYearCave.com coming at you from sweet home Chicago. Chicago. Chicago, one of our favorite cities in the country. We always have a blast visiting here. Uh, such a terrific city, so much art, culture. There is a shitload of wonderful music going on this weekend, even in addition to Fish. Uh, Pitchfork Music Festival is going on here. Beck's playing uh, some other great bands. Can't think of them off the top of my head now. A lot of indie bands. A lot of indie bands. Of indie bands. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's plenty of good stuff for all you other guys. Uh, there was also, uh, you know, that loser Billy Joel was playing here in town tonight. <laughs> we did not go to see Billy Joel. <laughs> but Fuck I, you, Billy Joel. Yeah. Not so much. Not so much. Billy Joel is so good. <laughs> so, the hey, show. Man. So, the show. Uh, it shows that uh, the um, pavilion in Northern Island, uh, pretty uh, overall, I hate to say it, but a terrible place to go see the band. Um, Not loud like, enough. Well, the city, I mean, UIC, Tinley Park, Alpine Valley, there are so many terrific places to go see music in the city, and uh, we go to this, like, giant flat piece of pavement with these crappy stands set up. Fortunately, it didn't rain this year, so we could actually go to the show. <laughs> Uh, but it still sounds terrible, and uh, overall is not my favorite place to go to. I vote for UIC. UIC. UIC is where we want it to be the best. Anyways, enough enough complaining. Let's get on to the show. Uh, they open with 555, which is uh, you know they haven't played it in like a show or two, which uh, <laughs> so I was dying for again. <laughs> <laughs> Love that one. Uh, wish they played every show. Um, rock, great version, uh, great way to kick things off. Definitely. Um, I actually, I loved, I thought the Rebo was really good. The Rebo was gorgeous. I thought it was really beautiful. beautiful. Transcendent. Trans triumphant. <laughs> Tri it's triumphant. <laughs> well, Angels dude. blowing horns. <laughs> Angels blowing horns. <laughs> Um, probably the highlight of the first set for me. Um, yeah, I really loved the Waiting All Night, too. I mm -hmm. thought the Waiting All Night was really awesome. But my ultimate favorite part of the entire first set was actually the stash. Really? Okay. Stash? Yeah, I actually really liked the stash the best. That was the highlight of that entire set for me. I think it was a lot, really songy. No, there was a lot of songs played. Um, but... They're always kind of songy, I mean. Yeah, they are. But I still felt like it was a little bit much. But at the same time, I mean, the stash was really good. I really liked that stash. I think uh, I think the first sets overall have been improving throughout the tour, um, and uh, I think tonight was one of the stronger ones of the tour overall. Um, mm -hmm. Again, uh, yes, a lot of songs, but a lot of the good songs. Birds was very high energy. Um, yeah. What else here? Sample in a jar. I always love to hear. Um, they're still playing Sparkle a lot, which surprises me. But what the hell? Yeah. Uh, Sparkle you know, was a lot. Coming over really well. Uh, and Coil, what a beautiful way to end it. Um, Peach it killed it. Peach, Peach killed definitely it. killed it on the Coil. It was really <laughs> he's, good. He's just a man. He's hilarious to <laughs> <Yeah>. it. Uh, <laughs> I also do want to also point out, uh, Song of the Ocean Sing was fantastic again tonight. Just really, really good. And I love the yeah. songs like in the rotation now. Uh, you know, all of a sudden, I mean, the song's 10 years old, and I don't think they've ever played it more than yeah. two or three times in Of all the songs to be picking to put into the yeah. rotation, I'm really happy that that was one of them. It's terrific. Because it's a really good song, and I don't think it's been utilized and taken out yeah. there as much as it could be because they didn't play it as much. Yeah. But... Uh, you know, a, a, a lot like, of those songs from Undermine got lost, uh... When, you know, during the five-year breakup, you know, there was all these songs that they wrote for the Undermined album that, you know, never really had a chance to flourish in the live setting. And uh, so it's nice to see Song of the Ocean Sing getting this chance to be in there. So the merch tonight, uh, oh, the merch. we had one coin for all three nights. One coin? And, uh, I think... It I was kind of hard to get tonight, just so you know. Yeah, a uh, I, had tough. A, I actually got denied a... At one of the um, merch booths, I had to go with the other one. Don't tell anybody. The merch booth on the lawn is the jam. <laughs> yeah, the merch booth on the lawn is actually where they had them. So I had to actually well, hoof it all the way back out there, which was so interesting. I, I, I think uh, these guys on the coin uh, were at the show last summer because um, you see they got their umbrella. They're trying to keep their fish dry. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, it was it was Jim Pollock's birthday today. He drew this for fifty his, years for old for today. Show. Fifty years, happy birthday, Jim. We love you. <laughs> happy birthday. Uh, so he made a terrific coin that I'm sure everybody's gonna love. Uh, we had also the magnet here. 
Again. Same magnet. Same old magnet. Same old magnet. Dif I think different date. <laughs> I, uh, it's kind of silly to keep showing the magnets, but hey. Hey, hey well, it's, we'll keep showing them off. It's kind of new, I guess. Different seat every day. Different seat every day. Tonight's seat was general admission. Surprise, <laughs> surprise. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> uh, and poster. Panel one of Drew Millward's triptych. Uh, this is a really like psychedelic weirdo looking print for me here. You can see the uh, it's really weird. When, you know, obviously you've all seen on Facebook the uh, uh, whole whole three panels all together. It's the flood taking over the city of Chicago. They do again like um, like the Randall's Island one. I think they all stand on their own nicely, and uh, I didn't even see the Fuego in there until just now. <laughs> oh yeah, the Fuego. Right in there. Fuego. Alright, up, up and up. Yep. Keep it rolling. Yeah. Drew's it keeping it rolling here. Those pink posters. Do you remember those pink ones? Yeah, they, they was, that was Drew's first one, I believe. That was his uh, first one? Okay. Which yeah. I didn't like the colors of at all. The color, sometimes his use of color is uh, is a little weird, but um, he always he, he always comes through with the, with a <laughs> solid design, and uh, these ones are no different. I'm sure these are going to be hot. 750 posters per night. Um, and given the fact that this is maybe the biggest destination show of the tour, and, uh, you know, the fact that there's like 30,000 plus people in there every night, this poster's probably going to be pretty hot. Uh, so. So, second set. Talk about the merch, talk about some more music. Yes, the second set was a lot of fun. It started out with the Golden Age, Golden which Age. was very exciting. Yes. I really liked the Golden Age a lot. I mm -hmm. thought it was interesting. I think it was different. Very different. It was really different. I think a lot of the songs, even though we have been hearing the same exact songs, it feels like, um, over and over again, but I'm okay with that and because they're very different. They're all being played differently, especially the Golden Age. Yeah. Only the second Golden Age of the tour. Um, and again, you know, covers in general have been more sparse. Uh, I feel like it's yeah. been... Was there even a cover at CMAC? I don't, I don't think there was a cover in Detroit. So. Um, maybe there was. 2001 in Detroit. 2001 in Detroit, good call. Yeah. Um, some people would say that's not a cover, but I do. It's, it's, technically, it's, <laughs> it's actually a cover. a cover. Not technically. So, it's a cover. It's a cover. <laughs> in that debate, it's a cover as long as I also, I, I really liked the Piper tonight. Too. Piper. Piper was my highlight of the show. Yeah, Piper was definitely one of the betters. I think... The Haley's was still the letdown for me, but I just missed the old Haley's. I, like the I used to like, I used to dance really slow in the beginning to like keep up my energy for the ending, and it because it was always just so amazing. But I feel like it's just different. It doesn't do that anymore. And I, but I feel like the end was really strange. It was the end was of Haley's really was weird. strange. Took a little bit. Um, you know the Piper. Uh, was like I said, the improv highlight of the second set, very, very jammed out. And I love that they, even if it wasn't the smoothest seg they ever played, I love that they tried to just make it melt into the Haley's. And it was really cool. And a lot of points, like at the end, you know, Trey was playing the funk chords over it, and uh, you know, and you kind of had that. What song is that? And he was like, Oh yeah, it's Haley's coming. Here, here we are. Here it is. Yeah. Uh, and we have Wombat. <laughs> Yes, Wombat. Uh, again, a, another interesting seg out of Haley's Comet in the Wombat, more of a stop-start kind of seg, but uh, worked, and uh, the end of Wombat got really psychedelic and spacey and uh, was, was different for me. Uh, yeah, the end of Wombat I thought was, I just couldn't quite figure out if, what I thought of it, to be honest with you. Because uh, I liked it, but I didn't like it, I didn't couldn't tw quite tell if they were meaning <laughs> to play that way or if it was a mistake or like or if it was just it, I don't know I, th I just thought it was really disjointedly weird hmm. but at the same time I mean it was cool yeah it was very so it was really cool yeah, <laughs> so a little, like, little mothership jam in there for me yeah. you know like those old jams from like fall 99 that you know, it was like the aliens coming down. Just a, just a touch of that during all that. Not the full on, that. you know, like abduction jam, but just the little, like, maybe like a little pro. <laughs> Alright, so at the... So, uh, shock test, uh, no, no, uh, 30 plus minute shock test, <laughs> like we've been getting used to on the store. Yeah, no, not a huge shock test, but it was, it But yeah, was, long, it was long enough, uh, went, went type 2 just, just a touch. Yep. Uh, love hearing Chocto's uh, ripping, good energy flowing, all, all the good stuff. 
And and they close the second set tonight with Slave to the Traffic Slave. Light. We love Slave. Slave. My favorite song of all time, Slave to the Traffic Light. Um, beautiful version tonight. I it know. was beautiful. I know uh, we, we kind of disagreed a little bit on this one. It was not Nikki's favorite. It was beautiful, as always. I really love Slave, but it was not my favorite Slave of the tour. And I feel like it wasn't as uh, strong as all the rest of them. I don't think that the jam was as ethereal, um, but I definitely thought it was beautiful. And I really liked it. I just was not my favorite. It, yeah, actually, it probably wasn't my favorite overall of the tour either, uh, but I did really enjoy this version because it was very different uh, than a lot of the slaves that we've seen on this tour, and really in general. Uh, I thought the build-up was very slow and very patient, um, and, and it did take a little bit to get going, but then there was this two-minute chunk uh, towards the middle and the end where Trey was laying down these texture-type chords rather than doing the straightforward soloing that, that we might typically expect in Slave. And it was just uh, mind-expanding. Um, there was a... <laughs> mind-expanding. Yes. Uh, there was a jump <laughs> in there that was very different than any Slave I've ever heard. Uh, gorgeous, incredible playing. Very creative. Um, like I said, mind-expanding. Uh, it was good. I think it was really good. I just looked at it a little differently. But that's okay because I thought it was... It's still the end. The, the end maybe didn't peak as hard as uh, as hard as you'd want, um, or as hard as uh, some of the other ones have. At the end, you know, Trey Solo wasn't quite as shredding and triumphant as uh, maybe a few of the other versions we've heard lately. But you know, uh, that's why we love to go hear them play the same songs every night. Is or maybe not every night, but <laughs> lately <laughs> it's been like every night. <laughs> actually, uh, that is good. that is actually kind of accurate, but. But anyways, uh, the, the point is, it's different. Uh, you know, this slave was different than the last slave. Both good, totally different versions of the same song. Uh, that's why we love this band. Definitely. And so then the encore ended up with Julius, which is always fun. It's a fun dancey song, I think. The crowd was really digging it. Crowd was digging it. <laughs> the crowd uh, digging was it. very much digging it. Talking about, I always love Julius. I talked to some cool dudes tonight, uh, and he was telling me about his first show where they opened with Julius, so I was kind of thinking about him uh, digging, digging the uh, <laughs> Julius encore because he was the opener from his first show. Uh, Overall, uh, probably not my favorite show of the tour, but they don't, they don't have to be the favorite. I had a fucking blast, and it was great to be there. Um, you it's know. always good to be there, no matter what. No matter what, if it's the best show or even not the worst show that you've ever seen, at least we're there. I was just feeling. To see it. I was just feeling really positive, you know. Even though, like, you know, maybe like the top of my head didn't come off during the show. Like <laughs> every time the started a song, I was really happy to hear it, and I was rocking out and having a great time. Uh, mm -hmm. Just I all, have to agree. All you can want when you go see the band, right? Exactly. <laughs> Hope you guys all had as much fun as we did. Uh, we will see you back here again uh, tomorrow night. We got two more nights here in Chicago. Um, so, uh, you know, maybe not thrilled to go back to this venue over and over again, but we are going to, I know the fish is going to make it worth it and we are going to have a great time anyways. So They're going to rock it. They're going to rock I'm it. I'm excited. They're going to kill it. Look out. I feel like it's, uh, you know, that this run is primed for some serious, serious highlights. Uh, you know, kind of like Randall's Island, the, the first night of Randall's Island was maybe a little bit of a warm-up to sort of get used to the place, and then they just destroyed the second two nights. Kinda I do feel like, like it actually could do that. Kind of feel like we're I right on like the same path. Be. Tonight, you know, we had a little warm-up, we had some nice highlights, we had some jams, we had some good stuff, and the next two nights they're going to just annihilate the place. Uh, so buckle your seatbelts, get ready, buy those webcasts, get out here to Chicago if you can, and uh, we'll see you back here real soon. All right, have a good one. We'll see Cheers. you tomorrow. Sweet home Chicago.